Breaking it down in layman's terms today, we've got Victor Antonio back, and we're talking about a special project. Sales World kicked off in 2023. It's a new project. Last time we had Victor on, we talked about mastering the upsell, but we're talking virtual sales kickoff events. Victor, what it do in layman's terms? Man, all good, Doug. All good. Thank you for having me back, man. I appreciate that. Well, it's it's been a, a few months, and I know we did the outbound conference together, but speaking of conferences... You've launched something first of its kind in the sales metaverse. Let's talk a little bit about Sales World. Why Sales World? What was the ins inspiration behind doing this conference? There's a lot to it, and we'll get into it. Yeah, a Sales World is the first sales conference in the metaverse. And the idea, Doug, came the you know, when Facebook decided to call itself Meta, that was kind of like, hmm, that's interesting, right? The metaverse is kind of real. Uh, when we were at Outbound together, you know, uh, I was in a discussion with uh, Jeb Blunt. We're just talking about the cost of putting one of these events on, how much money it costs to do one of these things. And then I'm in another conversation with other people who were there who had to fly in and pay a lot of money for, you know, airfare or hotel or both. And at the same time, something's happening in the market. And we've talked about this offline is that, you know, three, four years ago, I had probably one of the few sales academies out there, right? Now, everybody has a sales academy. So I think it was time for a pivot in my, from my perspective to kind of bring something new to the game. So we started doing some research on, on what was available for a metaverse and boom, salesworld.mv popped in. It popped in. You launched it at the first of the year. From watching your videos, you've got on your YouTube channel, you've got to head over to Victor's YouTube channel and subscribe, but he's got a playlist dedicated to sales world. And there's an orientation video that walks you through how to set up. It's free. So watch that. There's a video that's uh, a launch when he's going live with it. And then he's got, well, a guest appearance, which we'll get into that with Chris Stone's production and uh, Jim Fuse. They did a special video, too, which really, really is cool for what they did. But uh, with the launch and everything, you planned this for like three months. Is that correct? This is three months in the work. At least three months in the works. You know, it, you know how something sits in your brain, but it, about three months ago, I started really just kind of, you know, my daughter and I, Camille, as you know, does all my marketing. Uh, we started talking about this and we started doing some research on what type of software of applications development developers were out there to do something like this and pull it off. And we found, you know, a great company to work with. Uh, it was, it's a big investment. So it's kind of a risk at the same time, because I don't know if this is going to work. We're two and a half weeks into this. I think it's looking pretty good, but time will tell how this rolls out. It's a new concept, Doug, as you well know, uh, when you jump in, it's just a whole different experience and that's what we wanted. And so we're going to see how the uh, adoption rate is over the next month or two. Yeah, I know it was 21 days in. I mean, but 21 days of it going live at the time of this recording. But, you know, we're learning things and we'll get into that. But let's, you know, like I said, go to the YouTube channel, watch the videos, go to we'll plug the, the links and everything. But let's it's first of its kind. It's a virtual platform. It's wonderful from the standpoint that you can walk in, you create an avatar, you maneuver around. Again, it's all documented on the site. How did you, you've got a lot of speakers, so let's just talk about that. How'd you come about, I don't know, vetting speakers and creating that? We're, we're going to just talk about the main, not the main stage, but the main room. We'll talk about that and we'll break it all down. Let me go ahead and describe what Sales World is for those who are either listening or watching, haven't visited yet. Think of a sales conference, right? Just a big conference you've been to. They usually have a lot of speakers. They have a lot of sponsors there selling their wares. And again, it's a lot of networking going on and a lot of learning. So when you jump in the sales world, you're going to see, you know, booths with speakers where you can just, you know, you know, your avatar, as Doug mentioned, you can just kind of create your own avatar with your own face and logo. And then you cruise through it in 3D. You can go up to a booth and watch a speaker talk and, you know, get the lesson from them. Then you can go over to maybe a sponsor like one of the, the folks we have on there for, uh, is Brandon Born Anson over at Seamless.ai. We have his booth there. Uh, you can stop over by Brandon's virtual booth. And, you know, look at what he has to offer, the product they have to offer. So it's really the conference experience just moved into the metaverse. No, and I, and I get that. That's why I plugged the orientation videos. And I'm glad you kind of broke it down in, in, in your terms and how you how you do that. The conference is like, yeah, it's it, you got speakers, you got events. I mean, the first, the main room has got all these speakers, the booths, the sponsors, and it's got six rooms. I mean, you've got a room for... SDRs, you've got a room for account executives, you got the library, which is one of my favorites, you got the sales velocity room, mm -hmm. you know, and you got, you know, you can, you can get your music on too. We'll get into L L Lumina 
I'm pronounced, I'm butchering the name. And I should yeah, Lumera, know. but you're close. <laughs> Lumera, but there's a lot of fun, a lot of interaction. But the speakers, okay. How did you pick randomly? I mean, obviously, did you did you reach out? How what, what was the uh, the process in that? What was it? What was the, what was the method to the madness of finding speakers to speak in sales world? Uh, as you know, I've been around the sales game a little bit, so I kind of know who some of the best speakers are. Everybody brings a different flavor, uh, and so what I did is I reached out to a lot of folks, and I didn't even tell them what it was going to be. You know, I didn't mention it was going to be a metaverse. I just said it's going to be a hybrid event. And so a lot of them have been surprised, by the way, to say, "Oh, this is what I signed up for." And so I went through the list of people I know who I thought were great speakers. And obviously, we have like 24 speakers uh, as of this month in, in sales world. And there's more speakers I'm going to put in there. I just can't put everybody on, so to speak. And so my, my, my go-to was, well, let me find, you know, first of all, get some of the best of the best. And so I started out going after, like, for example, Tim Reister for Corporate Visions, uh, Brent Adamson and Matt Dixon, who wrote The Challenger Sale. Uh, Matt Dixon now has a new book called The Jolt Effect. I knew these were the three guys, almost like a mall. You want some anchor speakers uh, because they hit every range uh, in terms of, you know, they can do B2C and B2B and both. And then I started start filling in the gaps with different types of speakers. So I'm on cold call. I got Daniel Disney. He does LinkedIn. Uh, I got some motivational stuff. I got some, you know, psychology of buying stuff in there. So I was looking for different types of speakers, a different mix. And I got a kaleidoscope of speakers. And I mean, I think it's a really valuable tool to go into sales world and listen to some of these speakers. And we tried to keep some of the presentations, Doug, just tight, you know, from five to 10 minutes. Some actually went to 30 minutes, but the ones that went to 30 minutes, like, for example, uh, Matt Dixon, when he talks about the jolt effect and Brent Adamson went 30 minutes, uh, but man, they're just great presentations. And it's, it's really fun. It's, it's really fun. And when you maneuver around it and you check it out and again, it's free. Let me represent. Let me put that out there one more time. It's a free conference yeah. with a ton of speakers. V Victor named 24 and plus speakers. You walk up to their their booth like you're at a trade show and then the video plays. And, you know, I've got a, a few personal favorites and it's just a wealth, a wealth of information. And like Victor, you alluded to, you got a little bit of everything. One of the favorites was with the two gentlemen, uh, Luis and Ed Edward. The, the two Spanish speaking gentlemen, th their, their presentations were on fire. I like that touch. Yeah. yeah, those were, I wanted to create more of an international feel. And so we have two Spanish speakers in there, uh, Luis Fayas and uh, Edward uh, Rodriguez in there. And so their presentations are killer, man. They're just, and so for my Latin American friends, tengo algo para ustedes. Go in there in the metaverse. Basically, I have something for you. Go check it out. So, uh, and by the way, I, we've talked about this, Doug, offline, is that every month I'm going to try to just, you know, kind of churn the speakers so we can always keep the content fresh. I love that because keeping the content fresh, but just looking at like Luis, when I watched his, now I, my Spanish is not that good, but <laughs> he just came on like a boss in that video yeah. presentation. And yeah. I think yeah. as you yeah. add speakers and move things around, people as their presenters got to own the fact, play to the audience of the kickoff. Jeff Ajorik on his video, he said, welcome to the sales kickoff. I thought that yep. was really good. He played. And he some of the well. other presenters, you know, they just had a standard video. But you, you, you're building content. I know as we grow, people got to cater to your audience. But I, those two, those stood out me. I mean, Daryl Prales, I liked yeah. his branding and marketing. Daryl Prales, and, another. Daryl Prales just a beast also. You know, he's now a chief, uh, I think he's a chief revenue officer now. Uh, his wealth of experience is just amazing. I mean, just just a great guy, too. Well, he's a great guy. And he's a chief, uh, was a chief marketing officer at uh, Agora Pulse. And Agora Pots is one of the companies that's featured, one of the companies to watch. And what I like about the, all the sponsors and the research, you walk up to the, to the booth when you walk up a video place, but you also provide links maybe to their website, maybe to a white paper, whatever the case is. You're getting double coverage. I mean, that, that's just resources and more resources. How is that concept building? I mean, you got sponsors, but I, like, I kind of like the link. I like the link to the website. Well, we try to do so. So what I did, Doug, like anything, you know, there's uh, we have what they was known in the business as a cold start problem. And the cold start problem is basically the chicken and the egg. Right. Uh, I can't get sponsors until I get traffic, but I can't get traffic until I get sponsors to pay for it. Right. So basically I'm making an investment and, and the business model is this simple. Uh, we do the first month, maybe two for free. Uh, and then we drive a lot of traffic through the actual sales world metaverse, right? And the goal then is to find sponsors. Like everybody that's in there right now, all the, all the companies that are in there are not sponsors. I just put companies to watch in 2023. Mm -hmm. These are some great companies that I have in there. 
But the, and I say long run here, as far as the financial business model is, I'm going to get people to pay monthly, you know, the, the, the sponsors, so that the content could always remain free. And so right now, the goal is to drive as much traffic. So if you're listening to watching this, just go to salesworld.mv, you know, plug in uh, and check out what's in there. But that's kind of the business model I have in my head. What was the term you used um, starting this out? It's the first time ever doing it. You, you didn't give it a launch term, but you started this interview, and I'm trying to hold that you just use the phrase. It's the cold start problem. The cold start, and I and, I, yeah. and just to fall back on that. So you're, you're learning a lot from the process and, and yeah. anything. It's like innovation. And I tell you what, we, we, you mentioned some of the companies to watch. There's a ton of companies that you have listed, yes. tech stacks and sales, training companies, software companies, you name it, you claim it. Uh, I like the library room, like the Gallup. I want to go right. in there and watch that content or the the podcast, the right. podcast. And talk a little bit about the library. I kind of like that room. That's one of my favorite. Meet me in a library virtually. Yeah. So it's got, you know, so you have the main conferences. And again, if, you, if you've already watched the orientation video, then you know it. But if you haven't watched it, there's the, I'll call it the, I call it the main hall. That's where all the speakers and all the booths are at. Right. And then, by the way, to answer your question, I didn't answer your question, Doug, the, the, the value to the sponsors that are going to be in the future in those booths, those company booths, the reason we put the link is we're trying to drive traffic to their website. That's sure. the win-win. So, uh, so we have the main hall. What I then decided to do was like, well, let's create, you know, something that's beyond the main hall. And so as you pointed out, because it is one of my favorite rooms, the library. And the library is just kind of a virtual library. You walk in there and you can download books, uh, download reports from different companies like Gallup. Uh, you could also, you know, listen to a podcast from there as well. So the library is just a cool idea to kind of say, hey, here's some other content you might want to consume. There's a, just so much content you get when you maneuver around it. And I'm I've been part through it. Have I watched every presentation? No. Is there will I it's good. It's a challenge, but just so much. And I like the idea that you're going to revamp it. And one of the things is, you know, we, we talk about the main area, the main area with the booths, the speakers, the companies to watch that's in the libraries and the special rooms. But then. This is the part I, I really dig. You got the teleportation. Mm -hmm. You bring a little Star Trek into it. Yeah, and yeah, you, yeah. Boom, boom, you go into an entertainment room. Then you go into the sales legends and you go into, well, yes. I could be at the beach on a hammock watching Matt Dixon present. I mean, walk me through that process of the entertainment room and the, the, the teleportation. I just dig well, that. Well, the, uh, you know, it, it's one of the, it's like a pattern interrupt, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in the main hall and you're always looking at the main hall, it's going to get boring after a while. You can go into the library and some of the different rooms. And so we looked at this teleport uh, system that they had where you can just kind of hit a button and transport you to another room in the metaverse. And so as you pointed out, I had, there's a beach resort on top, so to speak, on top of the building. Uh, and by the way, the background, if, you, if you're in sales world and you look through the windows, uh, that is Singapore. You're right. So that you get to see what some of Singapore looks like. But you can hit one button. You go to the beach retreat. And I, I believe I have Matt Dixon's presentation on there. So it's kind of a beautiful you do. You do. background yeah. and you can listen to Matt Dixon. Uh, and then we created the entertainment lounge. And then we also have uh, the, the Hall of Legends, which is truly, truly, truly my favorite. You got Zig Ziglar and a yeah. cast of cast of others. You know that th th these are some you know just leaders, legends, old school oh. brothers, old school brothers, man. But, that's who we are. You, yeah. But you, you just walk up to the booth and Zig's gonna speak to you, and it's just that's what's kind of fun about the metaverse is that, and we, we and that's just one point. That's just a one uh, asynchronous way of watching content. But we the part that I think is what's gonna take off in months to come, and I and I I, I hope so anyway is the networking part. Okay, as you talked about when you defined it, you go in, I can see if somebody else's avatars in there, I could go into what's called participants and I could see who's interacting. So I could say, okay, I see uh, Chris Stone, he's maneuvering around in here and I see him, I, I can do a call with him. I, speak on that, because you're really trying to make this like metaverse, but you're making this like, I'm in person, virtually. It's, yeah, it's networking. The, the power of this platform, besides the ability to deliver great content, have different rooms to go to and visit, right? Is that you can actually chat with somebody. So as soon as you pop into the metaverse, there's your avatar. And then other people can see you and then you can see other people kind of cruising through uh, the metaverse. Within sales world, you can then click on an avatar, which is the easiest way to do it. If you see somebody, you'll see their name floating above them. You click on their avatar and you request a connection to talk to them and you can talk to them via chat or you can do a video call, you know, just like this, right? 
And I think that's powerful because that's the networking effect we're trying to generate. But again, part of it is getting enough traffic in there so we can have a great networking effect. So again, the key to this whole thing, Doug, is going to be driving traffic. But once people see how powerful this is, that you can actually like Zoom call, you know, the two avatars kind of turn to each other, so to speak, and they can talk to each other. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. It's, it's so powerful. And that's like part of the reason why I'm interviewing you and trying to spread the love for sales world is getting that, Thank bringing you. that awareness factor. Yeah. And it's, it's definitely like, I can look at this, Hey, meet me in the SDR room and we can, we can talk about this or right. meet me in the president's room or let's just go to the beach, have a drink and, and, or, okay, let's go, let's talk about the, the entertainment room. Okay. Yeah. That's a pattern interrupt. And you've got, right. you know, I, there's, Godzilla Kong. I'm not sure which Godzilla Kong it was and why you picked that movie, <laughs> but let, let, let's br break it down for me. The entertainment right. room. I just, I just, that's some fun, but it's, right. a, it's definitely, it, you know, let's, let's, we're in a metaverse. Yeah. Well, uh, so first of all, let, let's, let me just finish off on the hall of legends. Cause it is my favorite, like the favorite. Uh, and that is where I put in some of the legends like Zig Ziglar, Dennis Waitley, JW, uh, uh, Douglas Edward, uh, let me see. We got my man Jim Rohn in there. Bill Brooks is in there uh, and some other great speakers who I think are legends who are no longer with us. And so I thought I'd create that room just to kind of give exposure to these guys who most people have probably forgotten about. Unless yeah, you're pay some like homage to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. That's, that's the better way of putting it. It's about paying homage to some of the greats. And then um, so then I created another room called the entertainment room. And the entertainment room has several rooms. It's, it's an entertainment lounge with several rooms. Uh, one is, as you pointed out, it's a movie theater. It's called, you know, the cinema. And so in there you find King Kong versus Godzilla 1963. Now you probably asked me, Victor, why King Kong? Why Godzilla 1963? There's no rhyme or reason for it. But the reason it's 1963 because it's public domain. In other words, I can use the movie and I'm not going to get, you know, get some type of copyright claim on that. So that's why I chose that movie. Plus, it's it's fun to watch a 1963 King Kong. No, Godzilla no. It's hilarious. I got it. I got it. Not to get you away because you're on a roll, but let's just, yeah, yeah. we can go in hard and paint on Godzilla because after I saw that, uh, I started watching some Godzilla movies just for the sake of it. And I didn't realize there was two versions of Kong and Godzilla. And that's the first monster that godzilla they they, they kind of made a pivot in the godzilla movies by the way i, have, I know a lot about godzilla all of a sudden no, because of this but, yeah but but you you picked the right one and i like what you said because of the you know copyright infringement the, the newer one the more the american produced one not so good so anyway, right the, good yeah, it's, fun, you know, it's just something different like if you were at a conference and you just said okay i'm tired of learning let me go do something right uh so you know just go to the theater i also put in a comedy club right uh, one of my favorite uh, websites is Drybar, drybar.com. And so I use a snippet of one of their comedians, like five minutes, I think. And so you can go in there and listen to five minutes of comedy. You can then jump over to the wild card room where we put a wild card video. I won't tell you what's in there. Don't tell them what's in there, Doug. I know you know. Uh, and then there's an inspiration room where you can listen to some inspiration. All this is within the entertainment lounge. And again, it's really just to provide a different room to go to besides just the main hall. It's boring. After a while, no, it's not boring. And you've got the music room, and I know that's that's personal with you. With and I want I want to pronounce the name right. So talk about the disco ball. Just some fun, some oh. fun, been around, like you, like you would have yeah. at a conference. That's it. Conferences so, should be fun. Yeah. So we have a room called in the main hall. We have a room called Lumera, and my son is a DJ producer, so he goes by the name of Lumera. So I decided to kind of give him his own room within the metaverse because that's what a good father should do to kind of you know you got to pump your son, you got to boost exactly. him, right? You got to you got to put him out there, and so it's great music. Uh, he created the videos for it, and again, it's just a place where you can park your avatar for a while, listen to the music, and maybe go get a beverage, and then come back and just kind of continue the cruise through the hall. So I think. When I was putting the concept together with my daughter, it was like, we're trying to figure out with Camille. It's like, okay, we got the content down, 24 speakers, right? We got the companies in there, great companies in there, fantastic companies in there. Now let's provide some, like some, some fun slash diversion. Uh, Cause maybe you'll listen to a couple of speakers and then, I don't know, you want to cruise over to uh, the music room, the Lumera room, or you want to go down, you know, just go to the comedy club. It's just fun to kind of cruise through the metaverse. It's this technology is fascinating, Doug. And this is, I think, the, 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 the in-between step. Uh, I like to think of this as a real hybrid. You know, like uh, I, use a, I like to use a car analogy, right? We have combustible fuel. You know, you're basically gas-powered cars, right? 
Then we've gone to the hybrid, right? The hybrid is part of uh, you know, electricity and combustion engine, right? Gas. And then eventually we go over to EV, fully electrical vehicles. So I like to think we're in the in-between stage with the metaverse. True metaverse is going to be when you can put on some Oculus glasses, put on some gloves, and you can kind of move stuff and objects in the metaverse. So this is the tweener step between doing a, I'll say a virtual event like on Zoom like this. Then the next step would be the metaverse where we're at right now. But the pure metaverse would be when you got the glasses and all the, I'll just say, all the accoutrements that go with participating in a virtual space or augmented space accoutrements that's yeah. a big word that is a, big a word. pen recognize this pen yeah that's a great pen man where'd you get that pen who made that yeah. pen for you the guy we're talking to you right now yeah yeah. and yeah. i'm taking copious notes but uh the, i like how you said how with the metaverse how we're transcending the different things and obviously this is a cold start in a sense but you're learning and again 21 days in there's obviously some things that you've gotten feedback on and mm -hmm. I think the networking play really needs, really, as we get more involved and you get other speakers, there was something in the orientation video where you stated like the live stage, the main speaker on live stage is you right now. Correct. But will you have an in interaction where you actually will have a live, live stage with somebody speaking live where people can go in and it's going to yep. be a live contact and you incorporate like we're, if we were going live right now, it'd be live, but can you incorporate that into it? Easily. So there, uh, again, the main stage has a video of me doing a, I think a 40, 45 minute keynote. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to be honest, I'll, full confession, full disclosure is we had this big keynote speaker that was actually going to, you know, make a video for us so we could put it on the main stage. I wasn't, I didn't put mine there because of ego. It's just that this person dropped out at the last minute and I was left holding the virtual bag, so to speak. So I said, well, let me put my video on the main stage for now, which is a pretty good presentation, by the way. Uh, but the, the objective, I think, down the road, not I think, I know the objective down the road is to begin to do live events through the main stage. Okay. And so it would be something like this. It would be through the main stage. I think we're going to shift to that. Uh, maybe not mid-February. Mid if not sooner, we're probably going to shift towards that already because I think that's where uh, I think we'll be able to drive more traffic that way. I think that's going to be, you know, we are talking about earlier about five minutes ago talking about the progressions in the metaverse where we're going to go from the oculus classes and where we're starting out the cold start yep. i think that live component would be good because like this is a fallback i was on a webinar i believe it was tuesday of this week and uh typical you, you had live presenters but you had the chat and people were talking so that was interaction you try to ask a question and get it feels facilitated by the facilitator if your question gets in mm -hmm. and actually it was uh through vidyard actually and jeb and sherry levington were presenting on video and trying to chime and ask questions but I would like to see that live interaction with you said with the avatars coming in, adding that component and adding another layer to another layer. And I think that's where yeah. we're headed. I think you're setting the stage four ways in one virtually with that. Yeah, you can actually if you look at the stage today, it's got one main screen and then two four and four panels off to the side total two off to the side total four. Those panels can then become actual videos of somebody else that you invite on stage. So for example, let's say I'm doing the main video, I'm going live. I see you in the audience, your avatar floating around. I'll click on you say, hey, and they'll say, hey, Doug, do you wanna join the main stage? And you'll actually go up on one of those panels. Wow, and okay, now you put, now you put it to me, that, that's powerful. Yeah, that, and yeah. then when, when you start speaking, then you go on the main and I move off to the side panel and it'll be doing that dance. So it has that capability. Wow. I mean, and then, and then it's just so much. And again, that is, that is badass. I got it. Yeah. That, 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 I can't wait to see That's that badass. in its inception and actually happen. I mean, right now there's so much to kind of comprehend in it and yeah. you can go back and watch the videos, the speakers, the content, visit the companies to watch, AKA the sponsors. Yeah. There's so much, but it will continue the update. Why Singapore? Uh, I just got back from Singapore in I think it was October or November, November, maybe. Uh, I can't remember anymore. So, yeah, we thought Singapore would be a cool place. Singapore is a cool city. I mean, I've been to right. Singapore before. I just did a BNI Business Network International event, did, did their keynote. And I was like, yeah, this is appropriate. The next one will be in Dubai. So we'll change the the, the outside scape uh, and you'll see the Dubai uh, skyline. I mean, it's it, every like you said, cold start, cool. but every everything's developing. I'm looking for that live interaction on the main. I think yeah. that that's going to be really cool. And we what you're to, doing, if, I, if I may add, Doug, we were sure. like there were, there were so many moving pieces to this. Like first of all, trying to get 24 people to give me videos 
was more work than I thought. I got to okay. be honest. I want to get into that. Yeah, I'm going to get into the right. dirt, dirt yeah, yeah, yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so it was. It's, there was so many moving parts, so many things going on uh, that we just didn't want to deal with the live aspect of it yet. But now that the dust, the, the virtual dust has settled, that's why I think in February we can now say, okay, now I think we're ready to kind of ha- integrate the live portion within sales world. I like that. And as you get as you get in and data with more things, the people, the presenters positioning content will customize it hopefully more towards the event as opposed to pointing a video out for right. that just putting a video in for the sake of putting a video in. Sure, sure. It's like anybody in presentations. You want to again, you want to speak to your audience with something fresh, something relevant, something new that's insightful. It's a sales kickoff. That's why I go back to Jeff Majorix. He he actually welcomed sales world. I thought, okay, I yeah. like uh Luis, I liked he just came on like a beast. There were some really great presentations, and there were some that you know pull up. I'll be honest with you, just you just throwing up a Zoom call with a little little screen capture stuff. And I again, this is I think, me, I, you know, being me, being me. I'm just yeah. You know. What you're highlighting, what what you're highlighting is important though. At least for me, I'll just call myself as the meeting planner, sure, because that's kind of what I am, a meeting planner within sales world. Is that uh, I wish more people would up their video game <laughs> you know it's the nicest way of putting it because they have great content but it's like the, the 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 imagery the visuals don't match the content and i i think it really does take away from the power of their video and what they have to say uh and we've talked about this is that you know you know we're three years uh post pandemic now almost three years and i'm thinking okay after three years of us going live doing zoom calls google meet webex whatever you got whatever you're using I'm still blown away by the fact that people don't understand the basics of lighting, the basics of having a good camera or a good microphone. It's confusing to me. Uh, and there's a couple of presentations. By the way, there were some videos I couldn't use. And that's why I felt, you know, like I was falling short on some videos because I looked at them. I go, I can't put this in there. It's, the quality stinks. And so I got to play also QA person. In other words, quality assurance has to be there. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the, one of the people that I subscribe to, Garen Belaney, he uses the phrase virtually professional. Yeah. And it's just like that. You're taking away. There's some, first of all, all the, all the speakers are talented. Great. And it's just, and this could not necessarily sales or just in general, mm-hmm. just to fall back. It's just upping your game. We're three years in and, and, you know, it, especially if you go to like to a sales world and I'm looking at all, it's like, I'm blown away. There's all these, these, all these booths, all these speakers. I'm like, I'm going to click on your booth. And you better captivate me in 10 seconds or I'm going to move on. And I know this is in the development where one of the things right now is, you know, you click on the link, you got to watch the whole video. You can't pause it again. That's something that, you know, developers, you're going to be working on, but correct. By the way, so, so developers gave us a thumbs up. We're going to have that feature. We're just going to wait for it right now. But yeah, but by the way, that's great feedback, right? I mean, we don't know uh, what we need, don't need. uh, And the more you hear feedback, the more we try to adjust. No, and it, exactly. And, you know, I, I'm going to click on a presentation. I'm going to walk up, which is cool. You walk up, Zoom, they they start talking. Plus, the Hall of Legends, I, I do like that, the homage, the room of homage, because yeah. you just walk in and you get you get inspired. Then the fun interaction stuff. You can go to the beach, hang out. You can do this. The resources, the websites, the links, the companies to watch. It's just so much, so much to comprehend. Just, you know, what have you, I guess, in 21 days? I'll get to the question. What have you learned from this experience going in? I know we're 21 days in. I know you continue hmm. to grow, but is there anything that you, that caught an eye that or your interest that maybe? Oh my, you know, there's yeah. You know, you know, when you start a new venture, Doug, there's so many things that you've learned. Is just because you go through the process, right? Because I feel like this is like I'm starting a new business, right? And so the getting folks to cooperate that 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 was like I didn't think it was going to be that hard. I knew it was going to be easy, but I didn't think it was going to be that hard. Um. I think, you know, figuring out what some of the weak points are, you know, on the platform and then saying, all right, for example, the fact that you can't pause or play a video, uh, that's an issue. We're going to fix that. Uh, The networking, I think, is powerful. I think, again, driving traffic to sales world because people are like, what is that? You know, like, what is that? And they immediately when I tell them it's a metaverse, I think they're intimidated. They think they're going to need the Oculus or something else. Uh, the other thing is that, and this one I didn't expect, this is a curveball, and that is a lot of, especially like millennials and Gen Xers like to use their phones, right? Mm-hmm. Well, because this platform is so process intensive, you know, you need a lot of processing power because it's 3D graphics, you're moving through this virtual space. You can't run this on your phone. 
It's you're really not hard gonna to get, do. You know, I tried that before we actually yesterday. Yeah. I tried that. You know, I see people on the participation list, and I'll put a visual of that. You can tell who's who's out watching it at the same time you are, and that's that's powerful too. Like, oh, right. I see Steve out there. I think I'll connect to Steve. But on your phone, you see it's mobile, and you can't get it's a virtual thing. You can't get the visual elements. Correct. It's just not. It's not. This is more of a uh, see. You know, on your laptop. It's a PC on, Mac experience. It's a computer experience right now. Mm -hmm. It's not a. Just like you wouldn't want to play Fortnite on your phone, right? The game Fortnite, you wouldn't want to go in the sales world and, and try to move around that space. So I think that's that's an interesting dilemma, if I can put it that way, because I don't, you know, we can't get around that one. The phones don't have the processing power. And so that's what I've learned so far. And also, the, again, the challenge overall is to drive enough traffic. The traffic we've been getting is steady and decent. Uh, but I was hoping this thing would just like take off because it's such a cool concept. You don't have to, you know, fly anywhere. You don't have to pay for hotel, airplane <laughs> right, tickets. Right. It's all great. It's all there. I I put them all in one room for you. You laid it out for them to play it out. And here's the thing, man. I mean, let's just talk about. We talked about a little bit harsh about being virtually presentable. Mm -hmm. You've got 24 speakers. You got great content. You know, people got to get the word out. So yep. you know, got to fall back on the speakers a little bit. Just saying, this is me, not Victor. This is Doug. Yep. In lamest terms, evangelize for it. You're getting a spotlight on something new. Step your game up. That's it. Take that yeah. off. But you know what I mean? You know, but, but but it's interesting. You know, the I don't expect, by the way, you know, part of the agreement was that I'm not going to expect speakers to promote something. Sure. Because but. the this is just a philosophical standpoint. The uh, I, I decided that or I should say a philosophical stand is that when people ask me to do something for free and I deliver a video for free, I'm very irritated, if not irked by the fact that they then want me to turn around and promote it for them. And I'm going, well, wait a minute, I gave you something for free. And now you're asking me to give now my time from my list to you again. That's kind of a double ask. Mm -hmm. And so I've made it a point in, a, in my introduction to this and my ask for the videos, I said, I will not ask you, literally, I highlighted this, I will not ask you to promote it. So if they promote it and they choose to do it, great. But my position was, no, I'll do that. You've given me enough of your time slash content. I will not ask for more. I personally think it's in their best interest to promote it because, first of all, it's a cool platform. And it's just like another social media channel that really highlights their talent. talent. And so a lot of these speakers could, you know, you know, get more business because every speaker has where you can link back to their website. So I'm helping them drive traffic to their website as well. So, again, it's a new concept, but. We'll see how it goes. No, we'll see how it goes. But you're obviously making developments in your learning. I think as it takes off, I just think that live stage is key. I That's think the, the network, the you're networking right. is good because I've been in and out every day. I look at the participation list and, you know, just getting the being able to chat with people and doing right. that. I think that that's kind of that's really, really cool. It's 24 seven, seven days a week. Updates mm -hmm. and content. We're in Singapore at this time, but it could, it, like you said, Dubai is going to change. You're going to interact with different speakers and, and companies to watch. I mean, there's so much. I just, I recommend everybody going to the site, going to your YouTube channel is a starting point, though. I, you did an excellent job on the orientation video, uh, the teaser video. The launch was like you do going live. But one of the videos that I got, I'm going to give some guys a shout out uh, Chris Stone, executive producer Chris Stone and Jim marketing like the marine way jim fuse they did something that i thought was really really cool they did a video two users on the deal caster guys enough plugs they walked through the they did a nice little uh they did, video man. orientation of that how did how, you feel about that I saw that you was know, nice I, I, by the way perfect example i didn't ask them to do it, it exactly been, out of the kindness of their hearts they decided to go on to do a uh it's really like a reaction video you know, mm -hmm. like people always watch a you know a video for the first time and then they react to it. So it was like going through the sales world and reacting to what they were experiencing. And I, I was I'm so grateful that they did that because I think it was it was such a genuine experience captured. Right, on video. right, yeah. And it was just like you said, this fits right in line with the last question or last statement. They just did it and and they did it and it's it's real, but it's they they did a great job navigating through it, your orientation, and then in this interview we really didn't get into all the navigation. I just want to hear from the source, Victor Antonio, why he created it, where we're going with it, and mm -hmm. uh, other developments. So uh, I'm just going to leave the op a couple parting shots for you. Anything else that you'd like to add about Sales World or Victor Antonio? 
Let me Period. See. Oh, yeah, check out Sales World. So it's salesworld.mv. I know I've repeated that over and over again. And at least share it with one other person. It's it's going to be, I think, the future of what sales conferences are going to be. I am not uh, projecting or predicting that live events are going to go away. I don't think that's ever going to happen. But I think that this pres- provides a very viable alternative to not wanting to go to a live event or create a live event. Uh, I can almost see, Doug, people coming to me, a company coming to me like, I don't know, I'm going to pick a company like, I just call it ABC company and say, hey, Victor, we'd like to use your virtual space to do our own sales conference because we don't want to invest in building one out. And so maybe that could be another source of revenue where I can actually rent out the whole space for somebody. In other words, fill it with their speakers for a couple of days and just have a 24-7 event. That's another possibility. So again, all this is new technology. Doug, as you well know, and we're in experimentation mode. I'm in early adoption mode when it comes to, you know, the metaverse. And part of me is just like feeling my way through the dark, trying to figure this thing out. And you're, a, you're a virtual meeting planner. You didn't realize that, did you? I didn't. No, no, I did actually. <laughs> real, I did know that. I did know that. I didn't realize that I could actually. I, then I thought about it later. I said, okay, I am becoming a meeting planner when I do this. But then I thought about, well, wait a minute. What if somebody wants to actually rent out the whole conference hall, so to speak? Okay, that's another level of meeting planning. And so I think that's going to be interesting. I think driving traffic to the website is going to be uh, something that we continue to work on. So we're trying to do social media. We're trying to do some, you know, some search engine marketing, some paid ads to drive people through there. Uh, one of the things that it's doing for us, I think I can reveal this without, you know, shoot myself in the foot, is that it's becoming a great lead generator. Right. No, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. It's becoming a great lead generator. People are curious. So, so we're connecting with more people than ever. And where that leads, I don't know, but I think it's pretty cool that we're connected with new people. And the, the key word is connecting. So get in the metaverse, get in the sales world and connect with others socially and watch the presentations. And what's what's there yesterday will change tomorrow and it keeps growing like in real life, virtually. Yes. Yeah, we're excited. Like I said, uh, try, trying to keep uh, changing the speakers every month. Um, you know, that's going to be the toughest part of the game, I think, besides traffic. It's like, how do we keep the content fresh? And then maybe have a different theme every month or two. And so we'll see how it goes. So maybe we should do a follow-up in three months, Doug. We'll do it. We'll do, we'll hit it. Different city, different follow-up. We'll do it virtually, different setup. Hey, Vic, I appreciate you taking time. It's always, always good to get you in layman's terms to break it down. But what this is happening in the virtual world, it's it's growing, it's evolving. We're learning and we're growing. But I think there's a lot of ups. I don't say there's a lot of mastering the upsell in this virtual sales world conference vernacular how about that I, I like it i think the by the way first of all thank you for for allowing me to do this with you doug so i appreciate you pushing it out there and helping me out with the messaging and i think we'll look back at this and go remember when we did that we were so ahead of the curve because i think we're ahead of the curve well, i think i think you definitely are and what you're doing and 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 the community out there just got to get involved check out victor's work his books his content get into the sales world metaverse and and continue to grow vic thank you so much for coming on layman's terms I want to thank my audience out there, keeping it social and leveraging video.